this session i would like to discuss loops in any programming language loops are one of the main control elements or what we call it as control structure programming languages has different control structures so these control structures mainly used to control the flow of the program. So far you learn if else control structure. The loops are the other control structure of any programming language. So when you consider C-like programming language or the C programming language, we can see three types of control structures. We call them as for loops, while loops, do while loops, do while loops, three types, for loop, while loop, and do while loop. Loops are mainly used in programming languages too repeat specific code block. There are other methods of repeat the code block. So you might learn it later on. It's called recursion. So the loops are the kind of simple method of repeating specific code block. First of all, we will learn for loop. The flowchart of the for loop it looks like this. So we are starting the for loop here. At the start, there is an initialization statement. Then we go into what we call it as text expression. So if that expression true, loops enter into the body. Loop body consists of set of states. So after executing this set of statements, loop update the initialization state, initialization variable. Update state, which call it has update state. After update statements, it's checked back the text expression. If the text expression is text expression is still true then execute the body and update the statement, come back to the text expression again. In case that expression gets false, the loop exit, exit the loop and execute rest of the statement in the program. As you may see here, as you may see here, so this flow chart, we will code it something like that. So loop starts with, for loop starts with a keyword called for, and initial statement is this. It's initial some variables to some value. And we put semicolon, and then we put test pressure, this one, test pressure. The loops check the test pressure. So after that, the code we want to repeat, we write it here. So then this is what we call last part of the for loop. Let's call it as update state. So update statement, update the variables initialize here. So after update that, it come back to the expression. If it is true, execute the loop. If it is false, jump outside the loop. As I mentioned, how the for loop works, it initialize statement at the beginning. So initialization is executed only once. Then it do the text expression evaluation. If that expression is, is false, or what you call zero, loop is terminated. If that expression is true, it is not zero, code inside the body of the loop is executed. After that, the 
the system will update the variables we initialize in the loop. This will do until this expression gets false. As you may remember, in our first session, I have discussed some problems. This problem pi I asked to read the temperature for four days and print the average value of temperature. So we want to repeat set of statements. So that is, read temperature for five days. So this part is basically the loop. So we start the program and we initialize the days and the total value to be zero, and then we read the temperature, and after that, we add the temperature to the total, and then increase the days by one, and check whether this number of days less than five, so we go back, read, and add. So this read and add part, we have to repeat. So if that gets false, it go out of the loop, and calculate the average and print the average and stop the program. So this is, this part, you know, is to get repeat, so we can apply a for loop for that. So sample uh, stretch program, you remember something like that. So we apply a loop in the stretch for repeat until loop. But we could do the same with the for loop here in the same. So you see I initialize some values here, variables here. And our for loop start here. So at the beginning, so I initialize, this is initialization section. So there I initialize a variable called days to be zero. After that, initialization, uh, I check the uh, number of days, that is condition, condition set. So then, this is update state. So this condition checking, after the condition checking, I ask the user to enter the temperature. Using scan a function, I read that temperature value and add that temperature to the total. Initially, this total is zero. So these are the three statements I repeat in this folder. So when it comes there, it go back to this and update the statement. This update statement tells add or increase the days by one and assign the value back to the day. So it become it initially zero and after first execution it become one. So then it check one less than five or not. If it is true, actually in the second run it's true, and then it repeat the same thing. And then increase the value by one, it become two and check that still true and execute that, repeat it again, and then come back, it increase to three, four, and five. If we come five, that is get four, and then the program jump out of this for loop and print the average on the term, and the program get stopped. So that's how simple for loops work. So you see three parts, initialization, conditional checking, and update statement. So this section will repeat until that get false. Update statement executes at the end of the loop. And then at the time, every time at the end of the loop, update statement executes. So I repeat, follow up start with initial statement. That executes only once. And then do condition checking. And if that gets true, these statements will be executed. And then it come back here and update statement will execute and check the condition back and go ahead. And if that's true, it goes to the inside of the loop and execute that statement back. If not, it goes outside the loop and terminate the loop. All right. In addition to this for loop, there are different kinds of other loops available in programming languages. One of the popular loop is while loop. While loop flowchart, something look like here. So it comes 
the while loop start with the expression testing text expression condition if that condition true the while loop enter to the body of the statement and execute the statement in the body after that it come back and text expression again that expression is still true repeat the body and come back to the test state like that body will execute repeatedly until this expression get false if that get false it jump outside the loop so how do you kind of write a while loop something like that we say while and condition and the body this body will kind of execute again and again until this condition is true if that condition falls the execution will stop so that's how while loop works so, so as i mentioned while loop evaluate the test expression first if that test expression is true code inside the body of the while loop are executed if that test expression is evaluated again the process goes until that test expression is false when that test expression is false while loop is terminated right so by the knowledge you gain so far can you write a program to find the factors of given number so for example if you enter like uh, six so this program should print the factors one two three and six these are the factors of number six if we enter a prime number like seven factors are one and seven can you write a program which read the number and then print the factors of this given number how do you do that let's have a look on the white uh, pro, uh, flow chart the program starts it reads a number and it initializes that number a variable called i so after that we check whether this initialized variable i is less than or equal to n if so we check whether this n mod i equal to 0 in other words we take a variable i and we divide n with that i and see whether any remainder part if there are no remainder part that means i is the factor of n so if it, this is true we print i because i is the factor of n and after that we can increase the value of i again by value of i by one and check that condition again if that can still i is less than i is less than n so we do again we take the mod mod operation of mod n i and so on so we can repeat this part this part we can repeat so in order to repeat that part we can use for loop or we can write while loop so for example if you enter n as 24 this flow chart should be able to print those factors of n so how do we code that in c program so as you see in this program we initialize two variables called number and i and I ask the user to enter a positive integer and I read that that is the number which I want to find it out the factor of this given number n so after that I print that on the terminal and then while loop start here so you see I initialize a variable i to be 1 at the beginning and then I check the condition with inside this while loop while how do, the syntax of the while loop is while and within bracket we have view the condition condition says i less than equal number so inside this while of start here and end here inside that we have two statements in the first statement we say if number modular i equals zero if that is true we print i that means i is a factor of n if not we increase the value of i and check the condition back this part will repeat until i equal to the number after that this is terminated so you see using that we can get the factor of all numbers that is n uh, numbers 
all factors of given number. All right. So we can try the same program as I said using some other loop, for example, like for loop. If you want to do it with the for loop, so this is how for loop, this similar for loop looks like. So it has initial statement. So and this is condition and this is update statement. Let's go back to while loop. So it has the initial statement. Then this is the condition and this is update statement. So you see for loop is some kind of subset of a while loop. So whatever we write it with the while loop, we can implement it with the for loop as well. So there is initial, so sorry, whatever we write it as for loop, we can do it as while loop as well, other, other, not other way around. So for loops always can be implemented as while loop. So in this program, when you look at this flowchart, we can directly uh, uh, kind of convert this flowchart into the while loop. So initialize, take the condition, and if execute those statements, and until this i equal to the number. This is how while loop works. So in the for loop, you see these three, this is outside of the while loop in the while loop, and this is kind of condition in the while loop, and this is inside of the loop condition. So for loop, we give all these three sections, like initialization, condition checking, and update statement in one line. And so you understand that, I hope. Right. So in the C, there is another loop called do while loop. In the do while loop, it's similar to the while loop, but so in, let's look at the flow chart to understand the difference. In the do, do while loop, so first we execute the body of the do while loop, and at the end it tests the expression. If that expression is true, it come back and execute the body of the statement. And if that expression gets false, loop terminates. That means in the do, do while loop, syntax something looks like. So there is a keyword called do, and the loop start here and loop end here. And then the text question check with the while keyword at the end, not at the beginning. The while loop we check the condition at the beginning. Do I loop we check the condition at the end? Because of that, this body is executed. In the do I loop, this body is executed at least once. So in the while loop, there might be a situation. So the program will never enter into the body. For example, since we check in the while loop, we check the conditions at the beginning. Because of that, at the beginning, if that expression is false, the system may not enter into the loop. But in the do while loop, it's always enter into the body and then it executes the check the condition. That means the body of this loop at least executes once. So in such situations, we can use do while loop. In, that, in such situations required in our problems, we can use do while loops. Any loops, if you want to terminate it before it terminate by their typical condition, we can use break statement. So for example, so within the while loop, if you want to stop execution of the while loop at the middle, we can put a break statement somewhere at the middle. So in the flow chart, let's say this is a while loop. So we test the condition. And inside the body, we can check another condition. And if that condition gets true, we can terminate the loop. If that condition is false, we go continuous operation and repeat the while loop. So as you see, this is while loop, and the body will execute it until this expression is get false. But in between, if some other expression get false, we can stop execution that loop using this break. So you, not only the while loop, kind of like in the for loop, also we can use such break. So in this for loop, this is how the for loop body look like, but at the middle of the for loop, we check another condition, and if that condition get true, we can break the loop execution. So it may the loop will execute, execution may terminate at the middle of that. So that's how the break statement used with any loops. Similarly, so there is a keyword called continue. The continue keyword will continue the operation to the beginning of the loop. 
at the middle of the loop. So for example, so let's say how we use continuous statement uh, at a while loop, in a while loop. So while loop test the expression first, and if that expression true, so we can test another condition. And if that condition get true, we can go back to the beginning of the loop before, without executing the remaining body, right? So if that continue is not there, while loop will execute entire body. So at the middle of the execution, in with the continuous statement, we can stop execution of the sequence of the statement in the body at the middle and jump back to the head, head of the loop. So the coding is look like that. It's similar to break, but if you do the break, the program will jump out. Program will jump to the uh, top. Program is jump to the top of the loop. So that's how uh, it's uh, while loops works. Uh, similarly, we can we uh, we can use continuous statement uh, with the for loop as well. In the for loop, you see at the middle we check another condition. Have that condition get true? We execute continue. So continue means we go to the top without executing the rest of the uh, statement in this run. But in the next run, maybe this condition get false. So then it may execute full set of statement in the body. While loop also the same. So what you should understand in the loop, inside the loop, we can use two keywords or called break and continue break in here jump out of the loop continue will jump top of the loop since continue jump top of the loop the loop may not not terminate it may execute based on this condition if, when you use break it's actually terminate the continuation of the loop at somewhere in the middle if you use break but if you use continue it's actually what we do is we skip the statement which after this continuous statement for this particular run so that you should understand right by using this knowledge can you write a program to calculate a set of given number so let's say we want to write a program we enter numbers one after the other so the, pro uh, the program should treat those numbers and add them together in case we enter a number zero or a negative number, program should terminate. In other words, we have to write a program which read sequence of number until user enter zero or a negative number. If a user enters zero or negative number, program should stop. Until that, program should add all the numbers given. How about drawing a flowchart for that? So the flowchart for that problem may look like that. As you see, program start here, program start here, and we have initialized a variable total for zero, and then reread the number. So this number is we going to add. So before we add this number, we check whether this number is less than zero. If so, we just print the total so far. That means we terminate it and stop the program. If it is not less than zero, that means it's a positive number. So we add that number to the total. Initially, total is zero. When the first number enters, total will be equal to the first number. The after that, we check whether this given number is greater than zero. If so, the process will repeat. That means if, so, if this is true, go back and read the second number. If second number is negative, jump out. If second number is positive, it's add to the total. Since it is positive, repeat it back. So until someone enter negative or zero number. If someone enter negative or zero number, the total so far is printed on the terminal and so on. So you see here, there is a loop. So this situation 
maybe do while loop is much better. So for example, if you code this using do while loop, you may look like the following program. So as you see in this program, we initialize two variables called total to zero and number to be zero. And we start do while loop here. Start of the do while loop here, end of, end of this do while loop here. So in between, in, inside of this do while loop, we have these statements given. So the first statement has enter a number. It prints enter a number on the terminal. So after that, using scanf, we read the number. So number we want to add. And then we check whether the number we add is less than or equal to zero. If so, we break the loop. That means we immediately go out and print the total value. If that is false, so the program will, loop will not break. So it comes here and add the number we enter to the total. After that, we check the number with greater than or zero, just go to the top, print the, the statement, print the second number, and check whether the second number is less than or zero. If not, add it to the total and repeat back to the top. And in case someone enter a negative or zero number, it go down and print the total so far. So that's how we implemented this uh, problem using do while loop. Obviously, same problem we can implement it with the while loop. So if you code it with the while loop, you see the code something look like. So as you see, so initialization of a variable. So here on the, after that, we print that statement and print the number. So then we check whether the given number is greater than zero. If so, we add it to the total and then we print the second number. So if that number is true, we go back to the top, add that number and read the third number. If it is positive, we repeat. If it is negative, we go out. So this is how we can do the same with the while loop. But as you may see here, if you do that with the while loop, we print this printf statement and scanf statement, we write two times once here and once inside the loop. So the idea of the loop is to, re to kind of repeat the statements we should write inside the loop. But in the, if you use a while loop in, to solve this program, we can't do that. We have to write this scanf and these two statements outside the loop and inside the loop as well. Let's go back to the do while. So there we don't need to do so. We write print and scan if statement only once and those things will repeat. So why we can do that? Because in the do while loop, at least it is this body execute once. But in the while loop, so let's say the first number is zero, it never enter to the body. So you understand the difference. Obviously, so when you draw a flowchart like this uh, to add those numbers until someone enter a negative or zero number. So we can convert this flowchart to a program by coding it using a do while loop or coding it using a while loop. So which loop you should use depend on the way you're coding or depend uh, on the need, your need. For example, in this particular problem, we need to read a number all the time, for, right? So because of that, it's much better in this problem to use do while loop instead of while loop. Right, when you use loops, there is another interesting concept available. So that concept is called it as loop inside loop. We can use any number of loops inside the other loops. If we use loop inside loop, we can do various interesting things. So for example, we can have a while loop inside a while loop. We can have a while loop inside a for loop. We can have a for loop inside a for loop. Maybe we can have a while loop inside for loop, for loop inside while loop, like that. 
not only two loops, maybe we can have many loops inside the other. So what happens if you have such loops, one inside the other? In order to understand that, let's try to write this program. So this program says, we want to print a triangle look like that, number triangle. So for example, the program first asks the user to enter a number. If the user enter number five, it print in the first row one, second row two, third row three, fourth row four, and the fifth row, one, two, three, four, five, and so. So if someone enter number six, there should be six rows. And the last row is one, two, three, four, five, six. Something like that is called as a number triangle. So how can we implement a program to do that? If you want to print such a number triangle, the loop inside loop is the best way of doing that. So in order to understand how this loop inside loop works, so let's have a look the flow chart of this problem. So if you want to do this, solve this problem, so first of all, you have to kind of draw a flow chart. So then you can convert that flow chart into the code. So this flow chart, I, I draw a flow chart for the given problem. It looks like that, you see. The program starts here and it reads a number, how many rows we need, and then we initialize a variable i to be some variable i to be one. And after that, I check whether this i is less than or n. That is given number. So for example, in this condition, I control how many rows I need. So I need the rows from i equal one to the rows n. So that's why I check whether the given uh, whether if I initialize the i to one and I check whether with this i is less than or equal n. If not, i comes inside to this particular loop. So this loop here, call it as an outer loop. You understand that in a minute. So like, okay, let's say this is yes. So I, then I come inside this uh, loop. So there, I initialize the another condition called y, j. So this is i. Here I initialize the another condition called j. And see whether I initialize j to be one. After that, I check an interesting condition then I check whether this j is less than or equal i. So in the first time i is 1, j is also 1, Le j is less than or equal also 1, as you may understand. So this is yes. Then it comes here and print j. That means print 1 on the term. First row of the uh, triangle. Right. After that, what happened? In this loop, so this is hopefully for loop. So in this loop, so I increase the j by one. So then j become two. So with that, we come back and check the condition. So here in the second try, when you check the condition, that get false because i is equal one, j is two, so that is false. So if that false, so it goes through this path and print a new line character. That means the printing goes to the next line the printing of the first row is terminated and it goes to the next line. And then we increase the value of i by one. So then initially i is one. With that statement, i become two. After that, it come back here and see whether i is less than or equal n. Let's say we enter number three. If so, here two is less than or n, three is true. Then it come back here, it's come back here, and then initialize j to be one again, and then check whether j less than or equal i. So here in the second run of i, so j is two, i is two, and j is one. So this is true, print j, that is print, uh, uh, print j, this is one, and then increase j by one, that j become two, and check whether j less than or equal i, that is two less than or equal i, so this is true and print two. So that's how in the second row we get one and two printed. If after that, j become three, that get false and print a new line and increase the j by one, i by one and come back to the top. You see there are two loops of operation. 
So this is kind of an inner loop, and this is kind of an outer loop. Let's see how do you code it. So in the coding, it's something look like. It's a very simple code. As you see in this program, we ask the user to enter a number, and we read that number here, and then you see there are two for loops, one inside the other. So first two for loops start here and end here. Second for loop start here and end here. Initially, we initialize i to be one, and condition is i less than or equal to n, and then update statement is i plus plus, that means increase the value of i by one. And then at the beginning, since n is, let's say, 3, so i is 1, 1 less than or equal 3 is 2, so execution comes inside the loop. So inside what we have is now is another loop. Another loop then means the program will start executing that loop. So this is inner loop. So this is outer loop. So in this inner loop, what we do, we need initialize a j2 variable called j21 and check whether j is less than or equal i. So beginning j and i both one, so that become true and comes here and print one. First row we get one. So after that it comes here by increasing the j by one, that is j get become two. And then that condition get false, it comes to the second in statement in the outer loop. In the outer loop, I have two statements. This first is a loop state, and a for loop is another loop. And the second statement inside the outer loop is the printf, printf new line. Right. So after that, it come back to the beginning of the outer loop. And then it up execute the update statement that I become two. And check the condition. If that condition true, it comes inside the loop. Inside, we have another loop. And it initialized j again to zero, one, and execute that back, and so on. So that's how this loop inside work, loop works. So that means this loop will execute n number of times because it is inside of this outer loop. So by using this loop inside loop concept, we can write a lot of interesting programs. Right, so in this session, we learn how to use loops. So in C, there are three types of loops. We learn for loops, while loops, and do while loops. In the for loop, there are three parts, initialization, condition checking, and update statement. In then while loop, we have only condition checking, initialization, and update we need to do ourselves. As not, it is not a part of the loop, we as a program have to do these two. That is initialization and update statements. So loop will execute until condition get true. Then we have do while loop. In the do while loop, the loop body will at least execute once. While loop, we don't know. Sometimes the loop body may never execute. Right. By using this knowledge you learned so far, can you try to solve these five programs? In the first program, we asked you to write a program to calculate sum of all given positive integers. So if someone enter a negative value of zero, the program should stop. So actually, I have demonstrated that, or I have explained that problem, and demonstrated how to solve this problem. So you can try implement the same problem, or you can code the same program which I've shown in this pro, uh, slides or this session and try it yourself that is the problem one the problem two i have i have i ask you to write a program to determine the given number is a prime number so your program will read the number so then it should print whether that number is a prime number prime number is the number which divide only by one and this number itself so for example if someone enter four your program should print it is not a prime number if someone enters seven your program should print seven is a prime number okay so try to 
for this. And in the third problem, I have asked you to reverse a given number. So for example, someone will enter a number, let's say 123, then your program should print 321. It is reverse. So if you enter like 3, 4, 5, so program should print 5, 4, 3, reverse order. Think about how to implement that. Then in the problem four, I have asked you to implement a program to find the factor of the given number. So how to solve this problem, I have explained in this session, but you should write that code yourself, execute and see whether my solution works. Right, in the problem five, I have asked you to write the C program to print the multiplication tables. It is something like that. So you have to print 10 multiplication table if someone enter N as 10. So if someone enter, let's say, uh, your program should ask a user to enter number. Let's say someone enter number six, then your program sh should print six multiplication tables, something like that. One, this two, three, four, five, six. So in this program, I will give a hint in the problem five. So in the problem five, you might, you have to use perhaps loop inside loops. Try that, try that. Try to solve those five problems and uh, upload your solution to your JIT account and share me the link with, uh, share me the link. So then I will have a look. With that, I can conclude that session. So in the end of the video, I will show, uh, record the demonstration, but at the end of the day, you have to write five programs, which I have discussed in this session. Thank you very much uh, for listening, and let's uh, stop the session today.